I'd like to introduce RJ Khanna, who's the founder and CEO of Telius. Uh, one of the, the companies that fits squarely in, in the market space of automated decision intelligence. So, RJ, thanks very much for, for joining us on, on the webinar today. Uh, please introduce yourself and tell the audience about the problem and specifically what, how Telius was created to, to address that. So, let me start with a brief intro about who we are. Um, we are a decision intelligence platform. We are focused on enabling business and the analyst teams make faster, smarter decisions from their business data you know, using machine learning AI techniques and guide user through the journey to uncover relevant insights. So as Matt alluded to in his, his presentation earlier, you know, businesses are collecting massive amount of data and they want to use this data to make data-driven decisions. You know, however, when we look at this journey from data to decision, you know, that involves analyzing the data to understand not only what's driving business performance, but also understand why business metrics are changing and how can we improve outcomes. So let's take an example. So if you're head of marketing and your goal is to improve campaign conversion, you need to not only know, you know how different campaigns are doing for conversion, but also know if one campaign conversion is down, is it because of messaging or the channel being used or something else? Yeah. And once you figure out why it is down, then you need to make tweaks to improve your uh, campaign performance. But when we look at uh, the current analysis process, uh, sadly, you know, doing this analysis is an extremely time-consuming process, you know, taking days and sometimes even weeks. You know, as the complexity of this data is increasing, you know, users are really struggling to identify what's most important, you know, why metrics are changing, and what are the best actions to take. You know, typically, what we see that this type of extensive analysis, you know, typically requires support from advanced data experts. And you know, when we talk to our customers, you know, we are hearing this on a daily basis. So when we look at the last two decades, you know, our user experience on how we analyze data hasn't changed. You know, we were using dashboards on desktops, then became dashboards on clouds, then dashboards on big data, but it's still dashboards. And you know, don't take me wrong. While dashboards are great for high-level metrics reporting, they are just not built to answer all the ad hoc questions users have, and more importantly, those why questions. You know, and more importantly, you know, when you're working with large data sets, that means more variables, more relationships and combinations to analyze. It is just humanly impossible to explore these combinations manually you know, using these current approaches we have. Um, so now the question becomes is, okay, there's a lot of buzz around machine learning, AI, hundreds of open source libraries. You know, why are we not using those tools to solve these problems? In our view, you know, the challenge we see that is this is more around skill set and understanding of these machine learning models and statistical concepts for the business team. And also what we see in the market is that a lot of the machine learning models created by the data science teams, they are black box models and they're just really, really hard to understand for the business teams. So that's the, the, the problem we are, we are set out to solve, Matt, and uh, you know, we are bridging this gap between BI and data science tools. And I'm sure you, know, you hear that you know, when you talk to you know, different user communities and you know, your customers. Yeah, no, it's it's interesting. I think you know this this comparison to you know the existing tools is is really sort of critical to to understand the the landscape. I, I think, as you said, we you know dashboards have been you know reports and dashboards have been such a you know a mainstay of the analytics uh, you know landscape for so long. I think we almost become sort of stuck in that's the lens that we view everything from. It's you know it's either a dashboard of or or, or a report or as you say, obviously data scientists are very different, but. Um, you know, clearly we're talking here about, you know, uh, trying to, um, you know, break through some of those assumptions. So, um, you know, specifically, can you give us a bit more detail on how, you know, TELUS is, is different and, and, and particularly around, the, you know, the, how it's used and, and, and who, it, who it's aimed at? No, uh, that's, a good, that's a great point, uh, Matt. So what makes TELUS different? So what we did is we took a step back and, you know, built this platform from ground up to, you know, reduce this pain in this process we just talked about, uh, you know, so we can democratize data, you know, while still providing a modern user experience, you know, very similar to what we see in a, you know, consumer apps we use on a daily basis. And in my view, it's, it's not just only being about data driven, but it's also being focused on outcomes, like what outcomes you're trying to achieve. So we are solving this last mile problem of getting insights into the hands of those business analysts, users, and decision makers 
we just call it guided insights and let anyone uncover those insights you know easily so if you have a question in mind you don't have to wait for the analyst you can type this question in natural language in a search bar uh, and let the system you know get those answers along with smart suggestions you know across billions of uh, records uh, so as soon as you ask this question you know very quickly you notice you know some metric drop let's say you see you know some metric campaign conversion something drop last week now you want to investigate it further you want to know what's driving it so you know let the system you know push these hidden relevant insights automatically to you rather than you going and manually looking for it and you know this can apply to questions sometimes you know to ask and sometimes you don't even know you know what questions to ask i think you mentioned about proactive intelligence so you know the system can really push that information out so you know let's take this example looking at campaign conversion so if you see a drop in conversion you know tell your system can scan through all the data find the key drivers and contributors for example it could be combination of few things you know it could be certain audience type in certain age group who are not responding to the new messaging or there could be drop in paid visitors you know even besides you're spending a lot of money on marketing now a combination of these could be actually contributing to this change in the conversion metric and i think what we see is very quickly once you see why things change now you want to figure out how to improve those metrics by you want to target some user segments who will resonate well with your messaging and you know also when you look at this slide even though it it only focuses on a single flow from what to why to how how we're in practice what we see this is a continuous process you know more data is coming in more questions need to be answered and this just process goes on and goes on and collapsing this process down is is a key to enable everyone in the organization to make those data driven decisions uh so match you know so providing this in summary this providing this whole guided modern experience you know to answer these different kind of questions get deep insights with ease from all your data is is really what makes us different sure so sure. and you know obviously you know i talked about you know obviously the role machine learning and 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 automation has to play here of course you know all every vendor <laughs> worth their salt is talk has had something to say about automation and and ai at the moment and you know the way in which those <laughs> terms are used can be can be pretty vague um so you know what's going on under the covers here how how does this actually work in in practice now uh, that's a great question mass so how does this all work so let's take the case for a you know sample case like e-commerce we were talking about e-commerce company data and you know everyone would have seen some data like this where you have different users coming from different sources spending you know, some time on the website and in the end either making a purchase or leaving the site without buying anything uh, so what you're seeing on the screen is of course a very simple snapshot of data coming from different sources you have customer data website data transaction data but you know actually in real life you know, the data is a little bit more complicated than that you have hundreds of columns and maybe you know hundreds of millions of records so you know when you have to figure out why the website purchases went down you know you can easily ask a question and what system will do is system will use that as what we call as a target variable you know what's a target variable it's a term commonly used in machine learning basically once you identify the target variable you know, system will pick the best statistical or machine learning algorithm uh, and it runs it on all the available attributes in the data and uh, the attributes being your age state and channel session time these are the attributes uh, and then identify those groups and segments who are highly likely to either purchase or not purchase yeah. now with the current approach of you know using either sql or manual combing through the data you know that's a very time consuming tedious tedious process in most of the organizations and also besides being tedious uh, we also believe it is just you know we are also subject to human bias there um, so you know once you get this analysis you get those segments now these segments or groups are also ranked in the order of impact to the target variable and that's a you know major distinction i like to point out for the teams and users coming from bi analytics and it side that these are just not random anomalies or insights Uh, they're just not randomly saying something's went up or something went down these are very targeted in the context to the target variable since you know the, the, whatever contributing factors you are pointing out they have to have impact on the target variable so this is you know empowering you know our end users with this incredible power to do this analysis and you know providing of course resulting in significant time savings as compared to the the, the current approaches out there now the the question we asked in this previous slide is only one of the possible questions now in practice the business questions can range from 
ad hoc questions to diagnostic to proactive and you know you must be wondering you know how the system really decide you know what to use and now the key we see here is how can we connect relevant data sets with the relevant algorithms to answer these questions so we build this scalable insight engine to make this happen so based on the question you ask you know system figures out if it has to use uh, some natural language query to get those charts out uh, or it has to use some statistical analysis let's say if you're trying to do anomaly detection or maybe use machine learning algorithm to identify the you know, target segments yeah, you know what and it depends on what you're trying to do and the system also simplify and automate even all the boring uh, but essential you know data cleaning activities you know you need to create some maybe features there is some null values in the data you know you have to bin some of the continuous values and after doing all these processing in combined with insight ranking as well as natural language generation so we can make it consumable for the end business teams and the other point i would like to also make here is the the context and the relevancy to the end users you know who are they you know where are they you know what are they asking you know all this information is very very crucial for presenting them with only what is important to act on at a particular moment so matt i mean this is just a high level overview but hopefully this gives you a you know at least a high level idea on on you know how this thing works yeah no absolutely and obviously you you talk about the you know the 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 users at the end of the day clearly are the most important uh, uh factor here in some ways um can you give us an example of you know customers uh and and how they're actually you know using this and what kind of projects they 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 they're focused on uh no sure so when we look at the decision intelligence so decision intelligence is used to, can be used in enterprises across different industries we are seeing in you know pharma financial consumer goods high tech just name few and it is working across different data sources from commercial data to working with financial on the loan approval credit risk side to consumer goods to look at their market share and supply chain um and when we are working with our customers the feedback we are getting is that the analysis that used to take you know days it's you know they are able to get it done in minutes and they are gaining thousands of hours of productivity and saving you know hundreds and thousands of dollars uh you know in business savings um i'm going to also take a uh, example of a you know top 5 pharma company we are working with you know you know they were spending of countless hours you know analyzing data coming from different sources they have some internal data market access data even some third party data sources like you know iqvia symphony data they just never had such insight into the data you know just there are too many variables to to analyze it's not that you know those people don't know the business they were you know individuals they know their business really well but just going through that though, all these variables is very hard so we enable the business team to perform those analysis across all the data sources you know understand key drivers which are contributing to the change in market share you know identify some growth opportunities uh and be able to save you know millions of dollars in in a drug rebate and the more important thing being is all of this without needing you know you know a skilled knowledge and knowledge of all the advanced machine learning concepts and that's the the, the important thing uh you know we're focusing on uh and in summary uh, to wrap it up you know the shift toward decision intelligence you know this is really closing a gap a huge gap between bi reporting tools and the data science tools that are just you know too complicated and you know we are using this approach of ai ml driven automation we are uncovering patterns correlation key drivers across data sources at scale and we use uh, you know a distributed elastic in memory compute engine you know ultimately you know benefiting where you have a huge reduction of what i call as the analyst backlog um and we also see you know significantly faster insights to the end business teams and you know they can derive higher business value you know using their data So, yeah, so so Matt, while we are at the early stage of this concept being in mainstream, I think we feel this this approach is already being used in a pr- uh, practice. Number of organizations are using it to deliver value from the data already, and I will certainly encourage our audience to think about what challenges they have. You know how they can use state decision intelligence to some of those to solve some of those challenges uh, out there. Okay yeah and no, definitely and and I think obviously in terms of the, you know them thinking about that and and I'm trying to identify challenges that that they can apply it to perhaps you know seeing an action uh, you know uh, getting a sense themselves of of how it's different uh, would would be great so perhaps a, a good time to uh, to go over to to the demo 
No, no, absolutely. Uh, so, so I just uh, uh, um, shared. So I'm just switch my screen to to show Talia. So I'll just maybe spend a very high level overview, just maybe a couple of minutes. Uh, so when you come into the tool, uh, you can see a very easy to use interface, uh, like you see in any consumer application. You know, we have a kind of Google-like an interface where you know you can start asking questions, uh, and it also gives you some suggestions on some of the content which may be of interest to you. Uh, and then let's say you're working with e-commerce data, you want to know some things like, okay, I want to look at maybe what channels are contributing to my revenue in a certain region. So it's just a you know, straightforward question, but the beauty is you don't have to go and look for the dashboard where this information is. You can just type a question, get the answer. Uh, now let's say you want to look at two channels and say, you know what, I want to compare um, the two channels. So I want to look at maybe compare my social channel and I want to compare to maybe, you know, paid search and be able to compare these. And also I want to look at how they are trending on a, on a quarter by quarter basis and be able to just focus for South. So if you look at that, the system was very quickly able to give you the view on how this is trending over time, different channels very quickly rather than you know, going to dashboard. Now, the other piece I want to point out is this is not applying to only one table. So if you look at on this side where it is running this analysis across different tables from you know, orders tables to page views to products and sellers, it's combining all that information and be able to surface that to the end users. But then what happens is you see a point where things are going up or down. You say, okay, you know what, maybe you know, this is unusual that this went up by 300%. That's kind of where the really fun starts where – now, in this case, where you see some anomaly in traditional approach, you have to go to look for dashboards or SQL queries or, you know, find their data expert in your team who can, you know, answer this question. Not in Tellius. Tellius, you can click this button and say, let me investigate these reasons. And voila, you can actually go to this view and, and see a narrative, a natural language narrative of what happened to that particular metric. So why did revenue change in Q2? So it will very quickly say it went down by 1.7 million, 27% change, but more importantly, give you a narrative that it has changed because you know the, the, it was maybe coming from a channel source called social, and then maybe people are not able to go beyond a billing address page, and then also their time per session went down, and that seems interesting. But you know, being an engineer, you'll say, you know what, I don't believe it. I want to go further down and drill into it. So that's where the system provides you a lot more details and say, okay, you can drill down into say, what's happening in my social channel as compared to the other channels, you know, giving you that transparency and, and comfort feeling that this is, the, you know, why, you know, that, that social is actually much lower than the other channels, maybe certain, uh, you know, exit page, like billing address isn't doing well as compared to the other. And very quickly, you can say, you know what, I want to compare email versus social. Now, again, in, in traditional approaches, you have to do go and look at SQL queries or so, here you can click a button and start comparing why social is doing as compared to paid search and see all those drivers or contributors in the ranked order of impact. Is it you know certain income group or certain age group or certain product category? Um, but then importantly, so I want to target some customers. So you can actually go and be able to target some customers and with their offers, and the system can actually use machine learning to find those segments who you can uh, target. And uh, and then all of this analysis, you can also just run it in an automated manner where system can keep looking through that and find those things happening and give you that root cause uh, quickly there. So uh, I think I just want to give a high-level overview, not to get to the whole demo, but at least get everyone that it's it's real, it's being used in the organizations. Yeah, thanks. I think, you know, what's interesting particularly to me there is that, you know, whilst, you know, we we're talking about automation, and obviously the automated of that, the you know, large volumes of data under the covers, but clearly, you know, the, the, the ultimately the decision maker has a, a significant role to play here still in terms of, uh, you know, uh, zeroing in on, on trying to discover more and why that's important and obviously bring some domain knowledge to, to bear on uh, on drilling down in further into that data yep no 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 it's absolutely it yeah no, that's true cool excellent well uh, yeah thanks for that so i think we'll we'll open up uh, in a moment for for, for q a but just before we get to that, i was just interested in terms of 
uh, particularly in sort of comparison to, to perhaps what people are, are used to uh, from you know the the the, the, the business intelligence, data science tools and stuff. How, how are you pricing this, particularly, you know, large customers versus small customers? Uh, you know, what, what is the, the approach you, you, you're taking here? Yeah, no, I think that, that that's a good question. I think, uh, so um, we have a pretty flexible uh, kind of licensing model. So we typically work with annual subscription, but, um, you know, we also have an on-demand model where someone actually can just get started with, with an on-demand model where if, if they have some data, they can get started on that. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. the pricing model is pretty much based on the number of the resources you need to use, which is kind of tied to the uh, to the data you have. It's not un unlike other BI vendors, which start charged by users. We don't charge by users. We charge more on the, the resource capacity you need, and we grow as you grow. Mm 